Hey everybody, welcome to the last day of uh, web designing course and uh, today we are going to build a whole website from scratch and we are also going to learn how to do prototyping. Um, so yeah, okay, so you must remember this uh, from our uh, last session that we build this hero section. So we are going to build a whole, you know, full fledged website today and our speed should be like really fast today because we have to build a whole website in an hour or in one hour, 30 minutes. So yeah, it, this, this only this thing took us around 50 minutes that day because we were actually practicing uh, the, you know, complete basics, like how to put text, how to make frames, how to do this and that. Uh, so yeah, okay, so, First, uh, I want to just teach you basic prototyping, like how do you actually, you know, make things clickable and stuff, right? Okay, so let's say uh, this is my website, right? And uh, let's just remove all this and say this is another web page, which is about signing. Okay, so I'll just back in a bit. Yeah. And now what I want to do is Okay, so what I want to do is I want to be able to click on this nav bar on the sign in button and I want to navigate to this page. Right now, I cannot actually do it, right? Uh, it's like static uh, web designing, but I want to see how it will change and all that stuff, right? I want to get a true feeling of my website. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna select this uh, frame. I'm gonna go here on the right. You will see this uh, prototype button on the top, right? Now what I'm gonna do is, when I'm in prototyping mode, I'll just, you know, I'll just click on this. It will give me, um, uh, it will select this whole nav bar. Then I'll click again on this sign in button. And then it will give me plus signs like these on its corners. Can you guys try this out and let me know if you guys can see these plus signs as well? like really quickly. First, you have to go to prototype and then you have to, you know, select the sign in button. You guys can see these plus signs, right? Small plus signs around the corner. Yeah, okay, awesome. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I want this, I want that whenever somebody clicks on the sign in text, they should be brought to this sign in page right that's what i want right so what what i did what i did here i just i just you know click on this and i hold i am holding my click right now i'm not leaving it right and i just connected it to here you will just drag this to this screen and it will automatically disconnect try this out Uh, try this thing out. Okay, so what I did was I went like, okay, so yeah. I went to prototype mode. I selected this sign in text and I there was this plus, right? I clicked on it and I'm holding my click and then I just dragged this line to this page. Now it's connected like this. Am I clear guys? Or do you want me to repeat again? Okay. You want me to repeat again? Okay. So just go in, you just go on to prototype mode. Then just, you know, select this text box. 
this specific sign in text because we want when a user click on this sign in that's when uh, you know he goes into this page right this sign in page so i'll just select this one remember that I, that i am in prototyping mode here i'll just you know click on this plus and i'll hold my click and then i'll drag this line to the here like this let me show you guys again i'll click on this i'm holding my click and i'll just drag it here that's it is it cool now okay now how will you be able to actually see this in action okay so select this frame select this main first frame click on this play button on the top right and then there will be another screen open now this screen that we are going to see is called a prototype right or a prototyping mode right now what i'm gonna do is we had added this link on the sign in text now if you notice when i hover over the home nothing happens to my click like nothing happens to my mouse cursor it's still normal right when i hover on about nothing happens but when i hover on sign in it changes it changes like if there's some sort of link behind this button right now when I, I will click on this, it will it will just you know uh brought me here. It will just bring me here. Can you guys try this out? <laughs> okay, so uh everybody else try this out till then I'll explain it again to people who joined a bit late. Okay, so what I did, Subhan, Iman, and everybody who joined late, what I did was we had designed this uh, in a previous class, right? We had designed this nav bar and this main home page, right? So what we are going to do is, okay, let Bahaj join as well. <laughs> I don't want to repeat that again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, somebody's, okay. Give me a minute. And I'll and, and I'll explain again. Yeah. Okay. So everyone's here now. Yeah, everyone's here. Okay, so guys, I was explaining how to do prototyping on Figma. What it means is how can I, you know, make things clickable or how can I change things on hover and all that stuff, right? So what I told was you need to see this top right section. You will see this button prototype. Once you click on this, now what you need to do is you need to select the sign in button. First click will select the uh, this whole group. Second will select this whole uh, frame and third will select the sign in button right because it's a group inside a group inside inside a group right so once i have selected this i'll see these plus signs when i'm in prototyping mode i'll just you know just click on any plus and i'll hold that click i'm not leaving my mouse click and i'll just bring it to this second screen now, what will it allow me to do is now when I'll play this whole frame and I click on the sign in button, I can come back, I can come to the sign in screen. How do we actually see this in action? We click on this play button now. And we click on this sign in button. Now we can see it changes, right? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Something like this. Uh, no, 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 actually, no. Uh, Zenab, there is a problem. 
you have actually made the whole nav bar uh, like if you would click on anything on the nav bar it will just go here what i want you to do is actually just make this home thing or duck thing single text box make that thing clickable not the whole nav bar like i am selecting the sign in specifically you can see that this line is coming from the sign in right it's not coming from here okay anyways now i'll just move ahead a bit now what i want to do is i want to actually go back like right now i just cannot go back to the home page right i can just go to the sign in page so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to select this and i'm going going to select this home text box again i'm in prototyping mode i'll click on this plus icon and i'll hold my click and i'll bring it back here now what happens is i have this flow right i when i click on sign in i come here when i click on home i come here right okay now i'll just refresh this play i play mode okay now when i when i hover on this home thing i can see my cursor changing as well right just just like unlike the about right here right if i go to home i can then go to sign in home sign in home sign in i have this flow now right yeah okay yeah uh, this is a really good thing that lava has told let me show you how we actually actually you know visualize flows we always first you know build a mental map of the flows it's really interesting and i love it so much to build it let me show you so we are actually you know currently in pro pro process of building our main website totally like again so this is how we build our user flows this actually comes under ux designing so we are like okay the page that the user will land on would be a home page and from home page they can go to either about sign in or one of the product pages which are insider community experts that are main app time table tool and they will also have this talent of the week and events uh, option okay what is this <laughs> in the uh, insiders community so this is how we build user flows i think there was another one which was much more complex um but yeah i think you guys got the point right now anyways yeah so here we go so yeah this is how you actually do prototyping i'll explain one thing more because there is a huge problem with you know doing prototyping like this uh can everyone tell me if they are super clear on this prototyping thing up till here and they have practiced it with me can everyone quickly tell me yeah. okay thank you so much guys okay so let's you know just um uh, let me tell you one problem here okay so let's say i'll just you know build another screen okay let me just delete this okay yeah there's actually no so if i am like okay this is an about page now okay so the problem with doing uh you know um doing this prototyping thing like this is you have to uh you know tell your user flows again and again like let me show you something okay now if i go to prototyping mode and i want it to go to about right i can i can just you know select this about button here 
okay without button and i'll make this arrow here but let me show you one huge problem with this thing now okay now my about button is clickable but only when i'm on home page okay now my about button is clickable but only when i'm on home page and when i'm in about page i cannot click back to sign in or home what it means is i have to now uh you know repeat this thing again and again that uh whenever somebody clicks on home at this specific uh about page then it should re return to home like i'll have to you know do it again and again and again for every single page where i'm going to use this nav part like i'm going to now again tell it that on the sign in page go to like go to sign in and then it's like on the sign in page so if if somebody clicks on about then go to about and it gets it gets you know a bit uh complex as you can see here it's get you know it's like a, a bit weird so one way of cleaning this whole mess up one way of cleaning this whole mess up let me uh, if you think this is messy let me show you one thing <laughs> Let me just show you what a real mess we have to deal with um, in like a real project and why whatever I'm going to tell you why it has such importance. Okay, with the expert thing. Yeah, here we go. Let me show you something. Can we connect all pages to one table page. Uh, I didn't understood your question, Kira. Okay, so this is one of our design. It's like a production ready design. We just have to code this thing up. And uh, there's like huge amounts of skin. And it's not even that big. It's like normal size, whatever, you know, a simple thing that you guys, that a company would build, right? And when I go to prototyping mode here, just see what happens. Then I you know, try to select everything. Hmm, it's not actually showing up. I think Hikma has made some changes. In their recent updates or something, it should show these arrows. Or maybe I deleted it. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Um, I had one more. I think this should work. Mm -hmm. this. Okay, then is it comes to my kitchens to really try to do um this is hmm, I think I have deleted it. Yep, I have deleted it. Anyways, what I was trying to show you was there were like thousands of these lines all over the project. It's just three simple pages right now here, right? And um, in that project, we had like 30 screens and everything was connected to each other. So it was like thousands of, you know, line going, lines going there and there, here and there. It, it was like such such a big mess. Uh, it was, you know, just really, really haunting anyways uh but yeah what i want to actually you know show you was if you remember we talked about how we can make components right so a really good uh example of uh a really good benefit of actually you know having a component is you can um you know actually do prototyping a bit easier as well okay i'll just i'm just gonna steal the height and width of this uh, it's this and it's this. 
uh, okay, so it's 892 width and height is 70. Uh, I think, yep. I'm just going to redesign it really quickly. So I need to do it 45. And then I had this form about, there we go. Right, we have this nav bar. And what I want to do is I want to make it a component. And once I have made it a component, now see what I can do with it. Okay, now I'll go to prototyping mode. Actually just delete this stuff. Yeah, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this component have this prototyping lines. I'm going to select this home. I'm going to say that wherever this component is, wherever this component is used, and somebody clicks on the home icon or the home text on this component, it should bring them on the home page. And same with the about. Wherever this component is used and somebody clicks on about, it brings them here. And same with the um, sign in thing. Wherever somebody is, and if they click on this sign in button on the nav bar component, they should bring them here. Now let me make things a bit simpler. I'll just delete these non component stuff. And I'm just gonna drag a component from here. Now check this out, how it magically works. I'm just copy pasting everything. Now it has already defined its user flows. It knows that if somebody is on home page and, and they click on home page, they just come back to home. If they are on home page and if they uh, click on about, they goes here, they go here. If they are on home page and they click on sign in, they go on sign in. And it automatically defines all the user flows for sign in as well, for about as well. So this is a little trick that you can use whenever you are, you know, uh, trying to do lots of prototyping. But the thing is, you should uh, have like, the problem here was I was repeating this specific component again and again, right? So uh, one more benefit of uh, component driven designing basically. Can you guys try this out really quickly for me? Yeah, this thing that Lab showed. We had we, we were we we were like ten times more complex than this one. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for everyone to actually, you know, um, try this out, this component thing, this I just told. If you are done, just uh, write it on the chat. Yeah, I'll show you guys the preview till here, as Saiba mentioned. Okay, so now it works like really smooth. Okay. Now, if I, if I click on about, I go to about, if I click on sign in, whatever page I'm in, it doesn't matter. Everything is, you know, click it in any way. Like it doesn't matter which page I'm on or anything. So yeah, that's a basic prototyping trick. Uh, Ashraf, are you inside of Google? Uh, Rahim, <laughs> uh, do you want to add like a true link onto it? Okay. Hmm. Let's search if we can actually do that. Hmm. I think we can. Oh, yes, yes, we can, we can. Okay, we can. Let's try this out, you know. I wanna add a link on this. Can we do this? If I wanna 
see how long down this. Mm. Okay, if I'm like YouTube and I'm facing here, what happened? Oh wow. What just happened? Okay. Okay, uh, if I'm, you know, just clicking on the screen and I'm pasting it, it already applies the link on it. Like, let me show you again what I did. I just selected this about text. I have copied this youtube.com, right? I just copied that link. I clicked on this about text. I haven't selected anything else. And I just, you know, uh, copy pasted it the link just control v it here and it it has a link like if i click on it it opens youtube.com there you go okay, okay so is anybody done up to here but it keeps the underline under your text uh, let me see if it does it in the prototyping mode as well. I'm not really sure about this, but because you like, you don't really actually get, oh, it does. You never really, you know, um, get to do this mostly. But yeah, this is an interesting question. Let me see if I can remove the underline from somewhere. Mm. Oh, man. How do I select this? Okay. Uh, edit. No, it's that. Mm. I think we cannot actually do it. Hmm. It's like a hyperlink now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah. So is anybody done with the component uh prototyping thing at the layer? Uh, okay, wow. Oh yeah, Subhan just noted noted this down for me. <laughs> if you click on any text box, you actually see this uh link icon. And then you can, you know, put in any link. Thank you, Subhan. <laughs> yeah, you can do it this way as well. Okay, what about the elements turning color? Okay. Hmm. Okay, I'll 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 teach you guys the hover animations as well, but first, you know, try to do this up till here. Like the co is anybody done with the component prototyping? Okay, Hazik said done. Uh Subhan says done, Arit says done. Anybody else, guys? Okay, Zena, that's well said. Um, okay, okay, so you guys are done with that. Um, let me let me actually you know try to show you guys um how we can actually change colors and stuff. Let me okay. So let's say we have this gradient color and okay. And I'm selecting this one, prototyping again. I'm sending a prototype here. See, see what I'm doing. Please. Uh, there are two screens, right? So if I just want to change its background color, even if I want to just change its, uh, you know, like anything, I have to build another separate frame. It's something that, you know, that is like really annoying, but you have to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, you know, prototype, you know, build this user flow between these two. And I'm going to actually, uh, you know, 
um, add some animations here. I think if I, if I, yeah, interaction, yeah. Okay, so now when this is done, you just click on this specific line. It will ask you these questions. Now what I want you to do, to do is, I want you to actually, you know, come here on the right. It, it says this click, like whenever you click on this, go to this screen. But what I want you guys to do is, you know, change this from click to a, a hover, like on hover. If you see this on click to while hovering, if you just do this, okay. And now there would be, a, there would be a little bit of problem. Let me show you. If I, if I just uh, prototype this, see. Whenever I just hover my mouse over the the screen, it will just change the background color. See, but we don't actually want to do it like this, right? We want some animation. We want it to, you know, transition it, uh, have some transition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm again going to select this user flow. This is specific line. I can see this instant written here, right? So this instant is basically um, a type of animation. What I want it to do is I want it to, uh, let's say, dissolve. Let's try what dissolve would look like, right? And I want to select ease in and ease out both, ease in and out both. So it dissolves on the way back and it dissolves on the way in as well, like on the both side. So yeah, let's refresh it. And it's like much better now. Okay, now when I hover it, it dissolves like this, like, you know, like a proper animation. Is this clear up till here? Yeah, you can always, you know, play with your animations right here. Like you can uh, have different animations, you can have, uh increase the time of this animation like 500 millisecond if i try this now it, it it will be a bit slower yeah and if i am like smart animated then let's see what happens smart animate yeah so this is how you actually you know add animations it can be added in a specific uh let's say let me create another one right here. Okay. Now what I want is when somebody hover on this specific about button, I want it to change its color. Right? When somebody hover on its about. So I'll just, you know, uh, change this to on while hovering and dissolve, ease in and out, all that stuff. Now I'm going to actually change the color of this. Mm, okay. So let me select. Yeah. Um, I'll just change its color to let's say something like yellow. And let's play with this. Okay. Hmm, it's still not working. Let me see what's the problem. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. I'll have to delete this. Okay, now if I'm right. I'll tell you why I had to delete it. Uh, okay, it is changing color now, right? It is changing the colors. Okay, let me explain why I, I actually had to delete it. So when I was hovering on the main, you know, on this main web page, it was actually bringing me here. And when it brought me here, it had no connection to this, this page, right? These two were not connected. These two were. So when it was bringing me here, it wasn't, you know, letting me add this animation. To make that possible as well, like if I want both of these things, I'll just go here. Uh, okay, really quick. 
I'll just go here. I'll just um, go to prototype. I'll select this and make it up here as well. So now I have this transition here as well, and I have this transition here as well. And now if I am like, you know, refreshing it, let's see what happens. Okay. Now first it changes the background color, but when I hover on the about X, oh. Okay, here's a problem, I got it. So, this is actually you know, on the text box. Like, I, I just did it a bit wrong. Uh, what's happening? This is specific about what this thing. So, uh, It should work. Uh, wait. It's so annoying. <laughs> okay. Uh, about. Let me go up there. It should actually you know, bring you here instead of here. And this should be on while hovering. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. So this one is connected to here. This one is connected to here. Hmm. Let's try this now. I think I'm, uh, I misselected on drag on that transition. Okay, so. Well. Wait. <laughs> I want to select this stage. like really annoying animations transitions for tapping uh but yeah it's fun as well okay <laughs> why is it not doing it uh while hovering navigate everything's look good if i do this what happens There is some animation that's that's contradicting. That's why it's not letting it happen. There is some sort of animation that I'm really not sure about here. But yeah. Let's remove everything. Uh, uh, okay. Let's try again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why it's not working properly. Wow. <laughs> it is. Okay. It is working. I don't know why it's not working here. It should work here. Oh, I'm so damn stupid. And even you guys are not telling me. <laughs> we haven't changed the color of this text. How it will even you know, show that it's changing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> it is changing. It was changing every single time. But we had no way of actually seeing it. Yeah. See, it does change. <laughs> Everybody's like, you know, stressed why it is not happening. Yeah. Okay, so it does change now. <laughs> okay, it's good. Okay, guys, I know how to design. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there we go. Everything about this whole uh, component, transitions, animations, uh, prototyping, everything up till here. Okay, so let me just quickly view the chat if somebody have any questions. Um, why is YouTube all dance videos? So, for the animation, we have uh, 
Okay, awesome. All clear. Okay, let's build a website now. We have 15 minutes. <laughs> let's see what we can build them in it. Or uh, actually, can can I drag the class to like six because we started late? If you guys allow me, can I actually have the time till six p.m.? No. Yes. Okay. Let's try. Let's try. Okay. Any anyway. So yeah. Okay. So the very very first thing that I do is whenever I want to design a website. Let's say my boss gave me this task that I want to uh. I want a, a website um, that is on financial banking something, right? Financial payments, like Sada Pay, if you know about them, Sada Pay, uh, dot this. Okay, their website is down or something? Sada Pay, if you know about them. Sada dot, Sada Pay dot PK, this one. So something like this, you know, I want something like this. Okay, so, the first thing I'll do is I'll just, you know, quickly, quickly, I'll just do wireframe. I'll select desktop. Um, I'll just say, do this and I'll do two pages. Right? Okay. So, you know, just to, just to, you know, really, really quickly do wireframing, I'm going to go beast mode here. Okay. So I have a nav bar here. And I'll have an, uh, like a hero section here. And what I want is I want to add a mobile device here. So I'll make this one like a bit reddish. Yeah. I'll add like a mobile device here, like Sada Pay. And what I want to do is I want to add some text here, like huge text, huge text of like size 200 yeah something like this you know okay yeah something like this like how sada pay was built let me show you yeah. so they have huge text on left and a description sort of thing and they have this uh uh mobile device on the right right so this is their hero section i want to do this and i also want a button like sada pay so yeah actually make it a bit smaller like 150 and make it like this okay so hmm, i should have some sort of description it should be around 50 uh, okay 50 looks even bigger so 30 30 looks good uh, it should be uh regular or let's go with medium okay so there we go and we should have a button then some sort of button so button is like maroon i mean okay there we go okay so this is how i wireframed my um website really quickly okay this is my whole hero section and there we go. Now I want to see like, you know, I want to take an idea. What should I do with the rest of my page? So what I do is what me and Laba always do is we go to Dribble and we want to take some ideas. We want to study other people's design language. We want to see like what looks really cool and what doesn't. So we would be like, okay, uh, bank app or landing page. Let's write this. And we, we see these designs like this, right? We have some sort of idea. We can now explore, like if, if I'm designing something for myself, uh, and I'm like deciding, okay, what looks great to me and what doesn't, I would be like, okay, this looks really good to me. This, this specific design, it looks really beautiful, but this one doesn't look so good. Okay. So I'm going to skip this one. Uh, I'm going to drag down as well. I'm going to see, okay, um, let's see what else people have done. Okay. So, okay. 
Okay, so if, if I view this one, now what they have done is they have put some sort of statistics uh, under their hero section, and then they have added this, what companies use their services. So this is something I really like. So I'm picking this one for the section under my hero uh, section, okay? So this is my second, like something sort of design language that I really like. <clears throat> And let's go with the footer now. So I'm like, okay, um, no, actually I think footer would be too uh, too early to make at this stage. We wanna have some more elements, some more graphics. So let's see, so let's explore more. Mm, okay. Okay, so something that looks good. Let's see what these have. <clears throat> so they are like, okay, this one looks really good. They have described <clears throat> some benefits of their projects and they have added some sort of uh, small descriptions. They have added these people who are looking happy and they are you know, trying to say you would be so happy as well. Uh, if you would use our product. Okay, so, and this one uh, has, again, these have benefits as well, but it's in simple uh, text form. But one thing I really like about their design is they have these reviews at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plan things out really quickly. The first thing I decided was, I'll have some sort of review section here, right? Uh, some sort of review section. By review, I actually mean this one, this thing. Not reviews, but actually it was statistics, stats, right? Some really quick stats. So quick stats section. Then something that I really liked was, um, let's see. This one, companies that have trusted us. Okay, so I'm gonna create another one here. There's going to be a big homepage like thing and I'm gonna write, okay, what happened? Companies that have, that have trusted us. This is how actually I do wireframing, like me and Lava. So yeah, here we go. This looks good. Now I want to have another section telling us about, about the benefits like we, we discussed here. So yeah, this is how we're going to have benefits. Benefits are going to be here. And uh, one thing that I need to remember for this specific section is it will follow a pattern and that pattern would look like something like, there would be a graphic here, which let's say is maroon and there would be a graphic here then. Okay. Wait, what's happening? Uh, okay. Wow, really good. Okay, I'll just copy it. Yeah, there we go. And there would be some sort of text. Okay, now the thing is, I want to have some sort of demo text, right? And I don't have the mental energy in, uh, to put like real text into the wireframe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this lorem ipsum. You obviously won't do the whole content writing uh, at this stage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this random pieces of text. You will see this uh, in like a lot of wireframes, by the way. So I'll just come back 
here i'll just you know okay really so okay then what happened oh, bro where has he gone come back yes okay so yeah i think this is like too large so yeah up till here looks good there we go so i have some sort of demo text here i have some sort of demo text here i want to align my text like this so yeah there we go right so we have a your section quick steps section companies that have trusted us section and then a benefit section now i think that if you would put uh, specific reviews again after this company said have trusted us it would look you know a bit over like why are you telling it twice so i'll just keep it up till here and then i'll be like okay uh, this is enough now i'm going to actually have a footer so there we go there's going to be our footer now let me you know actually have some sort of inspiration for my footer as well so i'm going to go back to dribble i'm going to search for footer and yeah there we go we have some sort of uh footer designs here like you know you can design it like this and that let me see which one actually looks good i think this one looks really sleek and modern um yeah this one looks fine let's go with this one Okay, let me see what you guys have commented like 73 times in the chat. What's happening? Uh, okay, then. Okay, so the easy test. That's not huge guy. Now it's medium text. okay guys uh okay so i i have actually i have design inspirations for everything now so i have this quick wireframe ready as well for my home page right so that's not it what i want to do is i want to have a sign in page as well for my website right so yeah let's go search for good sign sign in pages as well Sign in page. Hmm. Okay, this one looks really good, doesn't it? Yep, let's go with this one. Something like this. So, what it's gonna be like is uh, there's gonna be some sort of sign here, which is gonna be 45. Yep. Yeah, so some sort of sign in design here, and then there's gonna be a lot of text here. Uh, uh, yeah. Some sort of text. Actually, you know, make it, let's make it clean. Sign in. Okay. Sign in, and then I'm gonna have these boxes. Where you put your email, your password, and they, then there should be a button that says login. So, yep, there we go. Our wireframe for the sign in page is also ready. Okay, so, okay, how does this wireframe look like? It, it, it's fine, right? Uh, like, did I run too fast or? you guys understood what I did every, like this whole in this whole thing. Can you guys tell me in the chat, please? Did you guys understood the whole process, like how I did things? Or was it like way too fast? 
Okay, so yeah, I I you know choose different designs. I took inspiration from them. I studied their design language, and I prepared a, a sort of a wireframe, right? So this is our stage one. Uh, it's always quicker and better to do this instead of starting from like complete scratch and trying to come up with the whole design language yourself. Because uh, first, uh, you know, it's just, it's like, you know what? It's like somebody have done years of uh, research, years of practice, years of uh, studying uh, on the whole design language, language thing, right? And they have prepared a design. And you could have studied their design and just, you know, skip this whole effort of years, right? So, like, would that be better? Or do you think if you would, you know, just start from scratch, you will create a random, um, a random design completely by your own? And then, you know, try to progress over the years on it what would be better obviously it would be better to you know just uh, study the design language and the efforts of others and trying to make it better or add some sort of personal taste to it right what do you guys think yeah right it will save you much more time and effort so that's something that one should always do, uh, especially in web design, because oftentimes when you will, you know, design something completely from scratch and then you will be randomly scrolling, uh, you know, dribble or something and you, it, you would regret it so much that why didn't you, you know, design it something like this as well. It looks so much better and you would, you know, feel so bad. So yeah. Uh, Always, you know, take inspirations. Uh, okay, anyways. Yeah, let's go then. Let's actually design our website now. Okay, so. Um, okay, so I have this wireframe. Right? Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna do it really quickly because we have really small amount of time. So you guys can, you know, see how I did things in the um in the recording if you want to follow it along so i'm quickly going to build an app bar now okay so a quick app bar um it should be have 45 it should have it should be linear it should have gradient sort of thing and i taught you guys how to make it you know have this glass feel How can I help it? Okay. So I'll just bring it back here. I'll just bring this back here. I'll make this 60%. I'll make this 40%. Yeah. I want to make the whole website black. So I want to make it a, like a darker version or something. So there we go. I remember how the hero section is gonna be like, so I'll just delete this whole thing. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put some text in here. Instead of using a, a triangle, I'll make a frame um, instead, so it's easier. Okay, wait. Okay, one thing that I wanna teach you guys really quickly is, uh, if you have like uh, these, you know, colors and you want to reuse it again and again in some places, right? Uh, would you like copy it again and again? No, it's like there's a much quicker way of copying things. What you can do is you can save this specific setting of color by, you know, just clicking on, on this thing. Oh, wait. Wait. If you go to rectangle, you see fill, right? What you can do is you can click on this style section. I clicked on this style section or style button. And then I clicked on this plus button. 
and I, 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 it automatically detected the color I'm using, this exact setting of it. And then I'm like, okay, I'll just name it nav bar uh, color. There we go. And I just pressed enter. Now it, now it has this color saved. I can, you know, just reuse it really easily. Like if I wanna make this whole uh, rectangle, uh, the color, uh, like the same color as the snap bar, I'll just select this rectangle. I'll come to this fill, this is style section. And there I can see my nav bar color here, right? I'll just select it and there we, we have this pasted, like really quickly. So all, you can make styles for the colors you are gonna repeat uh, again and again. So yeah. Uh, I'm just going to delete this. Uh, I'm going to make this half that color. Here we go. 45. Boom. There's a nav bar. Um, boom. I'm going to make it 20. No, 20 is 24. 24. I'm going to have another tax that's going to say apply. And then another tax, wait, then another tax that says sign in. Okay, I'm going to select these three. I'm going to add auto layout so they have proper equal spacing and have not so that I can add padding and stuff into it. There we go. Okay, so yeah, that's our nav bar. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I have to actually have a mobile device now. I want to have an iPhone frame now. Okay, so let's first try to search some for some plugin. I have this device model. Hmm, run. Let's see if it will give us a, you know. Okay, yeah, it does give us. Okay, so I want a bit of tilted device like this. So yeah, three empty frame. No, 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 wait. I'm doing it a bit wrong. Run. See the same age. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'll just drag it here. I'll click on it. I'll I'll click on this uh constraint proportions so it doesn't get you know messed up in sizing. I'll click K. I'll click click K and then you know just resize it like this. And then I'm gonna bring it in here. Okay, so here we go. Right. Okay. So now the thing is, I have to build some sort of a screen for it. Uh, so let me do that quickly on the side. Let's say it's um. So this color, and uh, let's say it's welcome. Okay, so um, hmm. now I actually have to, you know, there used to be a plugin uh, for tilting this. I don't remember its name right now, but okay. Let me open the screen. I'm going to teach you guys how I'm doing this, but just give me a second. Let me first try if I can actually do it like this. Um, it looks really bad, doesn't it? Okay, if I just move the proportion size. 
No, it doesn't actually look that bad, does it? Yeah. It's still really bad, <laughs> but it's stuff variable. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I think Liban knows about a plugin that uh, that helps. Yeah, art mockup. Let's see, Liban does know about this plugin. Art mockup. Yeah, this one. Let's see. <laughs> oh, it's gonna help us. Oh no, I don't want to create. Oh man, I don't want to create. Okay, so what I did for now was I actually, you know, whenever you have any sort of shape, like any anything, and if you uh, just, you know, uh, click a lot of times on it, you see these uh, blue lines over it. Like if you click it, if you click it twice, then you see these blue lines. This says that I am in vector mode. Now what vector mode means is you can, you know, uh, like change its shape in any way you like, you know, with these points. You can even create a custom point. Like if I click on this, if I click on this pen tool and I, I create, you know, I just click here, I can even, you know, and I can do anything with that shape in the vector mode. So how do you enter vector mode? Uh, just have a shape and uh, double click on it. Uh, mess its points up. If you wanna, like, if you wanna have a custom point, click on this pen tool. Click on it, then click again on this uh, mouse tool and just play with it. You know, however you like. So it's. It's really simple vectors and uh, pen tool. But they are, you know, they are just uh, something that you learn by doing practice. Okay, anyway, so I'm just gonna make this look a bit better. There we go. Okay, so welcome. And uh, I'm gonna make it 40. Here we go. I'm gonna have a huge text too. Okay, so welcome to let's see whose names look good today. Uh, we have already trolled Suban today, so um. Let's use Kirat. <laughs> Welcome to Kirat Bank. Okay. So, um, wow. <laughs> the, so the sound looks nice, right? Welcome to Kirat Bank. It does really feel like a bank. <laughs> Okay, so I want to have it in some sort of gradient instead of just having white text. So yeah, there we go. Green. And then here I want some sort of, I don't know, blue. Yeah, blue looks good. So welcome to Kirat Bank. There we go. And I'm just quickly going to add description. Let's choose size 30. And let's say, uh, okay, so Africa's largest and most reliable <laughs> bank. Right? Okay, so. No, not relatable. Reliable. Yeah, I can do two warps. 
I'm sorry, Kiran, <laughs> for all this. But... Make it white. So this is our hero section. Now I want to actually, you know, this, this whole device thing looks a bit off. So I want to add some sort of gradient behind it, like some sort of light coming out behind the phone. So see, the, see this really cool trick. What you do is you have the circle, right? And uh, you make it linear, something like this. You have it have colors like this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it behind this uh, phone. And then I'm going to add effects on it. I'm going to add uh, a layer blur. Let me, let me actually bring it ahead. I'm going to add a layer blur effect, but of uh, like 300. So it, it now it becomes sort of a gradient that we can put in the back. So does this look nicer now, guys? <laughs> I will know fill the bank account. This looks this looks nicer, right? <laughs> I'm not banking. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah this is how you can you know add background gradients and you can create your own gradients you can you know even make it pink if you like that but pink doesn't suit our theme right now our theme is blue and this green random thing that is really bad but yeah <laughs> we have to suffer it okay now what I want to do is I want to have some sort of quick stats section now that this is done. Okay, it's not really done. We have to build a button really quick. So I'm going to add a frame. I'm going to add this. I'm going to have a button really quickly. Okay, so now I can see that I'm using this blue and this uh, green color a lot, right? So I'll make this a uh, style as well. Um, let's say color, team color one. Team color one and just enter it right now i'll just use it here team color one there we go uh again 45 on it it becomes a rounded button let me put some sort of text in it let's say sign in make this a bit smaller no not this smaller 30 or 225 it should be same as this, so it should be 30. Yep, there we go. So there is a sign in button. Okay, so okay, so how does this hero section look like it can or does it look good? Usher is super invested in the bank's app. Get at Barbie. What what's happening in the chat, guys? Okay. Okay, let's add some sort of stats now. Okay, okay. So if I'll just add some sort of you know bright color here, it won't look good. Uh, it won't maintain that black consistency, right? So whatever sort of container I'll put, it should be like grayish sort of thing, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have a frame and uh. I'm going to have some sort of darker color like this. It looks, you know, it looks a bit uh, good with black. It doesn't feel like too different. So now I'm going to have some sort of uh, stats here. Let's say, okay, so let's say 450 plus, uh, let's have this number here. Let's have, uh, it's in 90 countries and let's have, um, let's say, okay, word stats uh, would make sense with a banking app. 450 plus million transactions, nine, okay, users, like 100 million users, but yeah, 
Let's make them a bit bigger. 45. Yep. Make them bold. And just see the magic I'm gonna do on this. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna add another text, which is gonna say million, but it should be small, like 15. No, not 15, something like 30. Yep. There we go. It should be exactly in the middle. Yeah. Okay, 450 million transactions. Something like this. Uh, okay, this should be 25. Here. Yep, this should be from the last one. So, yeah, there we go. It should be even smaller. Let's go with 15 actually, you know. Yeah, this looks good now. Now I'm gonna make, okay, now I can do two things. I can either make this like this, or I can either make the number in gradient. I think the number looks much cooler. What do you guys think? The number or the text? Number, right? Okay, so let's go with the number. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. Uh, I'm gonna be like, okay, it has 90 million users. Or wait, 90 global branches yeah do something like this i'm gonna align it again like this there we go 90 branches oh wait what is this there we go right and then the same thing, okay. For them, uh, and the, uh, okay, 90 local branches. This should be, okay, there we go. Okay, so we were like 100, uh, Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so hundred million users. There we go. Now to have it properly spaced, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a, okay. I'm actually gonna group these things first by like properly grouping them. So branches, global, and 90. These two things should be together. And I'm, then I'm going to add auto layout to all these things. So it, these three groups have proper spaces. There we go. OK, so does this look a bit good? What do you guys think? 8 billion happy users. Brian so knows. This is less web development, but more psychology. <laughs> Baki half kya hai. Number. Maybe the figures are what catches. Yep. Wow, is right. So, yeah. This is, this is looks too little. Like okay. Awesome. So, there we go. Uh, Okay, so hmm, let's see how we can do things a bit better now. I think I can actually, you know, add some sort of gradient here. Let me show you what I can do. So let's have this ball. Let's make it clean. I am just yeah. Let's make it equal size, 130, 130. So it's a perfect circle. And then let's place it here in the corner. 
and then the same thing again. Let's copy it and uh, do it like here. Yeah, here we go. If I want to add some more sort of style, I can again uh, add some sort of uh, blur, blur effect, that is like layer blur. I can add uh, a value of 10 maybe. So it doesn't look too blurry, but it still looks like it's at the back. It's not at the front. So again with this thing, uh, layer blur and 10, there we go. So maybe I think this looks a bit better now. Let's make it in the middle. Uh, I think this is not, yeah, this is the middle. This is. There we go. So yeah, there we go with our hero section and a review section. Now let's quickly build this thing up. I'm I'm gonna end the class at six. Uh, I just wanted to give you an idea about how we progress with things. So I think you would have an idea up till here. Let's let's open Canva for some graphics now. Um, because that's what we use aside from Dribble, Dribble like something that we use a lot. So let's create a custom size of, let's say, 1080, 1080. Okay, just hang on there for four more minutes and then we're gonna end the class. Okay, so I wanna have some sort of happy people, right? So happy people, I'm gonna go to elements, I'm gonna search for happy people and I'm gonna go to graphics because I want graphical elements, right? So I have these sort of uh, designs. I can see whatever I feel like suits me. Um, let's say. Instead of happy people, that's a happy person. No. I think I can use this one. Yeah, this one would look really good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna download this, but as an SVG. I'll show you why uh, it's better to download it as an SVG, right? And I'm, I'm gonna have it transparent background. Yep, there we go. Now let me download it as a PNG again just to show you why an SVG is like so much better. With SVG, you can change its colors. Uh, let me show you. Okay, so this one is a PNG. It's just an image. I cannot do anything. Like, it's just like an image, right? But if I bring SVG here, there we go. I can actually you know, change these colors. If I wanna change this shirt color, I can do it. So SVG is like really good for web designing. So if I'm like, you know what, I'm, I wanted to wear a green blue shirt uh, for my team to follow my uh, team, I can actually make it follow that. If I wanna have it like, let's say, this guy had a bad past so it have some like traumatic experience so it have blue color in the hair as so well so yeah <laughs> so yeah let's just uh, put it here i'm again gonna press k to scale it down uh, yep yeah, there we go so we have this Okay, so we have this guy here. Um, okay. Let's actually, you know, write the benefit sort of thing first. Just to, you know, get, get it quickly. Okay. So yeah, Kiran Bank 
is one of the largest bank in Europe. They have no, no, no. Let me, let me, let. I'm doing a song. I'm doing a song. First, we have to have an a heading. So let's say seamless, uh, transactions. Okay, this should be in heading forty five size bold. It should be something like this: seamless transact transactions. Okay, so with our ninety plus global branches, you can do seamless transactions anywhere in the world within a minute. Yeah, something like this. Now I want it to, you know, uh, trade some sort of height of this as well. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Yeah, so it looks something like this. Yeah. Now I'm going to make these both things. Okay. okay, so there we go. This is our first thing. Okay, delete all this. Obviously, I'm not doing it too good right now. It's like really bad, especially this text. I have put it like a really small, small amount of text. Actually, you know, just, just paste it again. Yeah. So there we go. There we have a seamless transition things. Now I want to have another happy person. Oh, wait, it's six already. Hmm. Okay, it's six already. Okay, so uh, just tell me if you guys had then uh, had a complete idea like how to build a website today and you guys understood prototyping and then I'm going to end the class. But if you guys want me to go on, I can do that too. What do you guys want? Class should be ended or should I go on? <laughs> do you guys want me to go on? <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining this question. I should buy the Canva hack isn't working. You guys got rejected today with the Canva thing. Hmm. I think I got it, but it's not like perfectly because halfway through it, I just got lost. Okay. Hmm, can well. Oh, wait, why did you apply eight times? <laughs> Ten times. Oh, guys, what are you even doing? You should have just stopped after the first try. Why Why did you guys just cap standing application? I just hope blacklist. Yeah, you guys don't have got blacklisted. Anyways, anyways, um, do you guys wanna want me to design this more or did you guys got how we actually you know design websites? Um a final project. What? Uh, okay. Um okay, uh Ihan says to go on. What about others? Ajiba, I just said, do you guys want me to design this website more or do you guys want me to stop here? Because it's like time. It's like six, over six, basically. Come on, guys, say something. Yeah, wireframing is important. Let's say if I wanted to make some, you know, let's say uh, I changed my mind. You know, or my boss said, okay, this looks really bad. This starts to remove it. Now I'm going to feel so badly annoying, like so badly annoyed if my boss would have said it directly on my design, right? But if I would have showed it, uh, showed this wireframe to my boss and I would have told him, okay, uh, I'm going to have a quick start section here. And then and then and there he would have told me, okay, this wouldn't, uh, this is something you don't want to add. Then they could have just removed it, right? So it saves you so much time and effort, and also it helps you a lot in planning things. 
person try building this website from scratch and you will know why why wireframing is so much better because you can uh, you know have some ideas you can visualize you can see what looks what would look good what's remaining if you are you know just planning and designing at the same time it's like really bad Okay, you know what? Um, people who wanna stay can stay. I'll just complete this quickly in a minute. And people who wanna go can go and maybe, you know, just check it out uh, later uh, on YouTube or something when we upload it. <clears throat> so yeah. Okay. I, I think, okay, yeah, okay, okay. So yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to have another happy person from here. Uh, where is another happy person? Okay, this is this is a better happy person, right? Or actually have a female. Maybe. Um, okay, we can't find a good. Okay, so. Okay, there we go. So I'll just um okay, uh flip it. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna stretch it. Do do the yellow cartoon please. This one, right? This yellow. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna export it as an SCG. Transparent background, download. There we go. Oh, wow. Okay. So, on to the Figma again. Copy pasting this thing inside the thing. My height and width are like 342 here. So, I'm going to make this 342 as well. There we go. There we go. Same thing. Character should be like this. So, okay, so like this should make sense. Okay, so there's another benefit, let's say, um, five percent cash back, cash back on every purchase okay so now it doesn't actually look good right because it's like a lot of text so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make it in two lines like this okay and yeah get cash back every time you spend your money with our credit bank credit card also enjoy a lot of gifts and uh surprises when you spend way too much yeah there we go <laughs> okay so there we go uh there's our um Okay, doki. This looks good. Huh. Can I have a footer now? Yep, let's have a footer now directly. So let's have a footer, the last thing, and then we are done. There we go. Um, okay. Let's have a photo of this photo. This. Okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, there we go. So we had some sort of design here with the paper, right? So it had description, logo on the left, and uh, quick links on the right. So I'm going to quickly do that. Did we have a logo here? No, we haven't. Let's search for a plugin that will give us some sort of logo. Um, okay, logo. Better logos run. What? Um, I don't know. That. Yeah, it has really good logos. Um, let's say we are some sort of bank. You know, SVB. Okay. Let's have this design. This looks good. We're very blind. What? Okay. okay. So this is our logo. That's okay. There we go. Let's see. Okay. We have, we have this one here as well. Get it bank 2023. Let's write this. Let's go here. There we go. That bank on your MVP, make it 15, and just have quick links here. Yeah. Okay, first have a heading, quick link, it should be bold, it should be 25, a bit bigger. And then have some sort of links of medium size. Let's say home. Let's say about. And let's say um sign. There we go. All the links that we had. Okay, so yeah. We find one more. Let's just learn more. And it should look good. Okay, so yeah, does this look fine, guys? Um, what do you guys say? Looking, uh, guys, what do you guys say? Does this look fine? Okay, so now do you guys have a complete idea of how to build a sort of like website? I just don't like the mobile. Yeah, it looks really bad, but <laughs> uh, I think Liber would share some sort of plugins for you guys. She uses those plugins to, you know, design these curved, uh, rotated, tilted stuff. So she did it, she does it like really good. Okay, um, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, so we are gonna give you a project and um, we will give it to you after you are done with the, with the first assignment on Tuesday. And there we go, then this course is done. Okay guys, is there any questions that you people have? Please ask me. Thank you so much, Ayan. Allah Hafiz. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you, Ayan. And I need die too. <laughs> bye bye.